would be my development. Like, eggs so, are like growing from like one to two years old. Oh. Mr. No, Dino, are we doing something yeah. with this? No. Okay. So, the, the things we need to talk about today are homework yeah. related to um, development. So, we, we know that in animals, for reproduction, we first need fertilization to take place. 187. And after fertilization, that initial zygote needs to grow into the offspring. And development is about where that happens, where that process takes place. And we generally split it into two categories. Development can happen either internally or externally. Right. So External development is um, typical of fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and even some mammals. Now, for almost all of these, there's some weird exceptions. There are some fish that give live birth. Um, there are some reptiles that give live birth. But we're sort of talking about the majority of fish, amphibians, reptiles have external and development. So, um, no. So, um, go back a slide. So, in some organisms, fish, amphibians, um, the development generally happens in the water, okay? or at least near the water. Right? So, external embryonic development in the water, most aquatic organisms lay their eggs in the water, they're fertilized in the water, and then those fertilized eggs will develop into the young in the water as well. Generally, these eggs are soft. Um, they have no shell. Um, they're often held together in sort of a mass by like a jelly-like substance that keeps them in sort of one place rather than individual eggs sort of being dispersed throughout the water. And often, um, fish, for example, can release hundreds of thousands of eggs. Okay. Amphibians, thousands. Um, and so typically they release eggs in large numbers because many of them don't survive. The vast majority um, either um, don't get fertilized, they're eaten by predators, they're in improper conditions for development. So there's all sorts of reasons why, but only a small percentage actually will hatch into young. Um, so they release a large number so that they're ensured that some number of them will, um, will survive. These eggs do have a yolk that supplies the energy for um, the development of that embryo from a single fertilized zygote um, to the offspring as it hatches from the egg. Um, so the yolk is used for um, nutrients, minerals, water, because they're in the water, can um, diffuse in. Um, oxygen can diffuse in, waste products can diffuse out. So all those processes can happen. Um, so you have some pictures there of frog eggs. Like little goldfish. Um, yeah, those tiny little fish eggs. Uh, you can see they're clear. Um, you see frog eggs around here. You know, if you're going fishing or something in a stream or a pond, you can find them oftentimes. Um, but those are examples of external development. Um, but animals that reproduce on land need some other adaptations. Because they are laying their eggs on land, they could easily dry out. And therefore, um, land animals, terrestrial animals, um, often have a waterproof shell that helps maintain that internal moisture. <coughs> so
So terrestrial animals have internal fertilization. The aquatic animals, female release the eggs into the water, the male release sperm into the water for fertilization, then they develop. However, outside of the water, on land, animals have internal fertilization. So the male deposits sperm into the female reproductive system. Those sperm cells fertilize the egg, and then the egg develops and is released by the female. Make a uh, bread. Do you like take it not away eggs unless they fertilize? No, interesting. Um, birds, chickens specifically, will lay eggs whether they're fertilized or not. In fact, the eggs you buy at the grocery store, they're not fertilized. Um, but they will continue to lay eggs even if they aren't fertilized. So insects, reptiles, birds all um, reproduce this way with external um, development in eggs. Some very primitive mammals, the monotremes, like the duck-billed platypus or the spiny anteater, they also lay eggs. Um, but those are the only two examples. Um, and again, inside of the egg is the yolk, which supplies nutrients, um, energy for the embryo to grow and develop inside of the egg. Um, and you see some examples here, obviously the chick, turtle egg, insect hatching from its egg. Um, so we talked a lot about this in seventh grade. So um, hopefully you remember some of the parts of the egg and what they do. But um, if you imagine um, some of these eggs, the shell is protective. It reduces the water loss. It keeps the moisture inside so that developing organism has a, a moist area to develop in and doesn't get dehydrated. The shell depends on the type of animal. Birds have a hard, brittle, calcium-based shell. Um, and reptiles, however, have a softer, more flexible, leathery shell. In birds, the calcium carbonate shell actually slowly dissolves from the inside over time. And the calcium that's dissolved is used to form the bones of the, um, of the bird as it develops. It also makes the shell thinner, so it's easier to break out of when the when the bird hatches. The amnion is a, a fluid-filled sac that surrounds the embryo, protects it from, um, it cushions it. The yolk, the yolk sac stores the nutrients. Actually has vessels in it, vitiline vessels they're called, which actually bring the nutrients from the egg into um, the, the bird. It's sort of, you can imagine as a placenta and umbilical cord that there's blood vessels which bring um, blood from the placenta into the, so the blood supply of the fetus. Same sort of thing happens in the um, bird egg, although it's coming from the yolk. And so nutrients are absorbed in the yolk into these blood vessels, which lead into the bird circulation. The elantilus is another membrane, another sac inside of the egg that is responsible for waste removal, for diffusion of carbon dioxide, and also for respiration. It stores up waste as it accumulates from the, um, from the embryo as well. And it also has vessels in it that can carry this material back and forth. The outermost layer is called the chorion. It's just inside of the shell. It's that membrane inside of the shell. It's also important in gas exchange, so material can move back and forth. And then albumin is the liquid part of the egg, the egg white, we might call it. Provides protein, provides moisture, water for the embryo as it so when we look at the egg, we saw this back in seventh grade. Again, you have the shell, you have the outer. There's two chorion layers. Okay. There's the amnion surrounding the embryo, the yolk. These are the vitiline vessels which bring the yolk material into the chick. There's the elantois, again, for gas exchange, for um, holding waste as it's produced by the embryo, um, and all those various parts of the egg. And so the only group that has really internal development are the mammals. Okay. Mammals have internal fertilization, so sperm is deposited inside the female reproductive tract, fertilizes an egg, but then that egg develops and grows inside of the female. That's internal development. Okay. Now, the marsupials okay, are a unique group of mammals and um, they don't have a placenta, so they don't have an exchange of material between 
the mother and the offspring through the blood. In marsupial mammals, they grow using nutrients from a yolk, and then they hatch and are, are born, I should say, very, very premature. And they're born, um, and then they make their way into a pouch that the mother has. Inside of that pouch are mammary glands. And so this very, very immature young, young after it's born makes its way into the pouch and stays in the pouch for an extended period of time, nursing, gathering enough nutrients to finish its development till it can mature and become independent. You know, for example, kangaroo can be um, after birth in the mother's pouch for up to a year, spends in there. Um, so they're born immature, finish up their development in the pouch. Many of these are found in Australia, but there are North American marsupials, South American marsupials, koalas, kangaroo, possum. These are examples of marsupials. The majority of mammals, however, are placental mammals. Placental mammals, again, internal fertilization. The young develop internally in the womb, which we call the uterus. Remember, they're not in the mom's stomach. And it's a horrible place for a fetus. Filled with hydrochloric acid. They're in the uterus. Um, that's where they grow, where they develop. Um, and in placental mammals, eggs are small, microscopic. There is a yolk present, even in placental mammals. Well, there's not, they don't, doesn't provide nutrition for the developing embryo. But the blood supply does um, originate in the yolk. Okay. The egg is fertilized. We'll talk more about this because we're going to talk about human reproductive system after break. Um, but after the egg is fertilized, makes its way through the fallopian tube into the uterus, implants into the wall of the uterus, which is where the placenta forms. And the placenta is where there's an exchange of material between the mother and the fetus. Nutrients, oxygen, can diffuse into the blood of the fetus. Waste materials from the fetus diffuse into the mother's blood. But there's actually no direct connection. So the mother's blood does not enter the fetus. They run concurrently, right next to each other in the placenta, so that materials can diffuse back and forth. But fetal blood doesn't go into the mother's circulation. Maternal blood doesn't go into the fetal circulation. They're completely separate circulatory systems. The umbilical cord connects the fetus's circulatory system to the placenta. It has three blood vessels in it, two arteries, which carry the blood from the fetus out to the placenta, and then a vein which carries the blood back. Um, in the monotremes, that's the smallest group of mammals. These are the egg-laying mammals, the, the um, duck-billed platypus, the echidna. Um, they're born very, very small, um, and then they nurse, um, but they are born from eggs. The mother lays eggs. There's no placenta. Once the eggs hatch, they're immature young, and then they nurse and finish development. So these are the monotremes, platypus, very, very small eggs. This is the spiny anteater. That's the other monotreme. Okay, here's immature, mature once the spine can develop. Marsupials. There's an opossum. They live around here. See them once in a while. Mostly nocturnal, you don't generally see them walking around much. You might see them dead on the side of the road. Sometimes you see them out at night. They're That's walking so around. Is it opossum or opossum? It's spelled opossum. So it's pronounced, like pronounced opossum. opossum. No, you could call it an opossum. Most people say opossum, it's just opossum. Wait, um, don't Transparent, they're tiny, tiny little things. Yeah, that's a koala. Those are uh, placental mammals. That's what a placenta actually looks like. Ew. Oh, thanks. That's gross. It does. So after mother gives birth, we'll talk more about this. The placenta um, comes out afterwards. The mother has to deliver the placenta. It tears away from the wall of the uterus after the baby's born and comes out. 
Um, here is the umbilical cord attached to it. You can see it's sort of a spiral. So that's where the baby is. Uh, it's just in the uterus. So the wall of the uterus has the placenta grows on the side of it. And then once the baby's born, that placenta tears away from the wall of the uterus and comes out through the vagina. Interesting, um, interesting fact about, um, about the uh, fetal development is that, so normally, if you remember when we talked about the heart, two sides of the heart pump blood, one pumps blood to where? Uh, um, the lungs. The other side pumps it to the rest of the body. In a fetus, it's not, it doesn't work like that. In the fetus, is there any reason for blood to be going to the lungs? No. no. The lungs are non-functional, not until the fetus is actually born. There's actually sort of a little hole in the heart which can bypass pulmonary circulation, okay, so that the blood is not going to the lungs. Okay, it's up here in the heart. It's called the ductus arterios. And it's here, and it allows blood to go from the right atrium to the left atrium directly through this little um, opening. Uh, as after the baby's born, however, um, because of the differences in pressure, that sort of closes up. It gets sealed up. And then circulation returns to a normal pulmonary circuit and a body circuit so that the blood's going to the proper place. Wait, I put it in the umbilical cord? Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's kind of curly. It's got blood vessels in it. I mean, it's not always so curly. It doesn't necessarily look like fusilli, but um, often it is. Here's really, you got to sorry. Like a pasta? I like pasta. All right. Well. <laughs> All right, any questions about placental mammals? All right. That's what we needed to do today. Is that all the Um, no, no. Yeah, no, the rest of the packet's gonna be on the test, you just gotta know it. Yeah.